course is sponsored by Comcast NBC Universal. We would like to thank Comcast NBC Universal for the generosity in making this course possible. This course is presented by Major George Coleman of the nonprofit Soldier for Life organization. Hello, I'm Major George Coleman, the Education and Training Director at the U.S. Army Soldier for Life program, and welcome to creating a career skills program within your organization. This course will provide you with information about working with military organizations and will help make a veteran's transition from the military to a civilian workplace that much easier. At the end of this course, you should be able to define the purpose of a career skills program, understand the major benefits of a career skills program, know the Department of Labor's requirements for unpaid internships, understand the program guidelines, and recognize the best practices for a successful career skills program. A career skills program is a vocational and technical training program developed for military personnel who are nearing the end of their military career and are transitioning to civilian life. This program focuses on practical application of learned skills which are intended to lead to employment in a specific career or technical trade. Businesses work hand in hand with their military counterparts to create a pipeline for employment once the potential employee leaves the military. Every program is continually evaluated for job placement statistics to ensure quality opportunities for our service members. Service members still receive their full pay and allowances from the military during the training period, reducing the cost for your organization and creating a win-win situation. The service member receives high quality training and skills that are in demand in the civilian industry. Your organization is able to hire a veteran who is already trained in the skills you need, ready to work on day one. While the focus of this course is on unpaid internships, there are several different types of programs, including apprenticeships, on-the-job training, employment skills training, and job shadowing. Apprenticeships and skills training programs are required to meet certain criteria in order to be approved, including approval by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, accreditation by an agency that is recognized by the U.S. Department of Education, American National Standards Institute certification, or registration and adherence to the standards for apprenticeship as defined by the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Apprenticeship. For programs that include unpaid internships, the Department of Labor has criteria that must be met before the program can be approved. These requirements ensure that the program adheres to the Fair Labor and Standards Act and does not contain any unfair labor practices. The Department of Labor requirements are covered in more detail later in this course. Developing a career skills program for your company is a great way to create a pipeline of skilled, ready-to-work talent for your hiring needs. The military provides an environment of leadership and independent thinking that is valuable in today's workforce. Welcome to Lesson 2, Major Benefits of a Career Skills Program. Incorporating a career skills program into your business gives you access to an incredible pool of talent. Transitioning service members bring a broad range of skills with them into the workplace, including leadership, diversity, being team-oriented, and organizational skills. Before talking about the benefits to your organization, let's look at how someone in the military uses the CSP or Career Skills Program the following animation shows how the CSP helped Sergeant Joe Smith transition from his military career to a civilian one. Sergeant Smith determined he is not going to re-enlist in the Army and now has a little more than six months until his separation date. He is not sure what will happen once he leaves. He visits his installation transition office to find out his options. After talking with a representative, Sergeant Smith discovers he is eligible to participate in a career skills program with a local company. He applies to the program and receives approval to serve in an unpaid internship three days a week at the company for three months, spending the other two days serving in his unit. Throughout the internship, Joe is able to interact with various coworkers while learning how the business functions. Joe likes the company culture and feels like he would be a good fit at the company. At the end of the internship, Joe interviews with the manager he just spent three months interning for and is offered a job at the company starting the week after he leaves the military. His skills from the military are a close match to the job he will fill at the company, and because he has been in the office environment for the internship, 
Joe can start the job already prepared to succeed. The biggest advantage of an unpaid internship is that the intern does not need to be added to the payroll since they are still receiving their military pay and benefits, notably health and life insurance. This reduces the employer overhead costs while gaining a highly trained employee who can start being a productive member of the team immediately after being hired. Other benefits of hiring veterans and transitioning military members include an employee trained in highly technical skills. The technology used in the military is often cutting edge. Many jobs in the military have a direct correlation to jobs in the civilian world. An employee with leadership and life experiences. Employees with military backgrounds are more mature and experienced than their peers, often having traveled to different countries and various parts of the United States. An employee able to unite people from different backgrounds. Military service requires personnel to work with people from many different cultures and experiences. This prepares them to work in any kind of environment with people from all different cultures with different beliefs and values. An employee who is disciplined and resourceful. The military teaches personal responsibility and working with what they are given. Thinking independently and adapting to changing demands is a hallmark of military service. An employee who is an independent thinker. Veterans can quickly survey situations, assess the risks and hazards, and make intelligent decisions about how to proceed. An employee who is adaptable. Military service requires members to quickly adapt to their environment and continue to give their best even during high stress situations. An employee who is goal oriented. They have a mindset of completing the organization's mission and seeing every project through to the end. An employee who is a natural leader. People who serve in the military have excellent communication skills and can mentor or lead others. As you can see, bringing in employees who have served in the military provide huge benefits to your company in terms of experience, communications, and goal-oriented work ethic and technical proficiency. Military experience creates employees who are responsible and able to handle the workplace environment. Welcome to lesson three. Now let's move on to the core topic of this course, starting a career skills program in your company. Although all the services offer some form of a transition program, the Army has been very proactive in this regard and we'll use them for our example. Your starting point for creating a CSP is the Army Soldier for Life program. They have all the experience, personnel, and resources you need for a great foundation. The Soldier for Life program has created a partnership with educational institutions and industry leaders. They oversee over 100 programs at 26 different Army installations. As of May 2017, there are more than 30 programs still under development. The Soldier for Life team can assist you in determining if your training program would benefit a certain military occupational specialty or would be better for any service member regardless of their military career. The Soldier for Life team can also assist in determining the optimal military installation to start your program. In addition to the current and upcoming programs, the program also offers guidance from six specially trained regional CSP coordinators. These are the people who will help you gu guide you and your organization through the CSP process. As you can see from the image, these regional coordinators work with businesses all over the U.S., the U.S. territories, and Europe. Their experience is invaluable. In order to get the most out of your program, you need to determine exactly what you need from a career skills program. There are two very important criteria to consider. One, the jobs that are open. What are the jobs available? Where are they located? Are they in one area or are they all over the nation? Which skills are required for these openings? What would a similar job category be in the military? Where will the training take place? In a community college, technical school, a union training center? Two, the training location. Is the training available at a military installation? Is the training outside of an installation, but within 50 miles? Is the training away from the active duty location? Once you've determined the what and the where, the regional CSP coordinators can help you craft a successful program.
Because we are discussing unpaid internships for our program, you need to be sure you comply with the requirements from the Department of Labor's Fact Sheet 71. These requirements ensure the businesses do not take unfair advantage of unpaid staff compared to their paid employees. Here are the six requirements. The training while taking place in the company facility is similar to what the intern would learn in an educational environment. The internship experience is for the benefit of the intern. The intern does not displace regular employees, but works under close supervision of existing staff. The employer derives no immediate advantage from the activities of the intern, and on occasion, its operations may actually be interrupted for training purposes. The intern understands that he or she is not necessarily guaranteed a job at the conclusion of the internship. The employer and the intern understand that the intern is not entitled to wages for the time spent in the internship. Before entering into a partnership with a career skills program, you must first draft a Memorandum of Agreement, or MOA. These can also be called a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. This is a legal document that provides an agreement between your organization and the military. It is less formal than an actual contract, but it is an enforceable agreement. Once the MOA is drafted, it is reviewed by both your organization and the installation's legal departments to ensure it complies with local laws. After that, the MOA and all the documents required for your proposed career skills program are sent out for approval by the installation commander. Once approved, it is reviewed by the Installation Management Command Headquarters, known as IMCOM, in San Antonio, Texas, and the Human Resources Command at Fort Knox, Kentucky. The review process can take anywhere from 60 to 90 days, and sometimes longer. Your regional CSP coordinator will be your primary point of contact through this process and will provide you updates on the status of your packet. During the review process, your documents are checked to make sure your program provides the following. Little or no training costs for service members, industry recognized and credentialed skill gap training for the occupation, a high probability of employment, which we typically define as an opportunity to interview for a position within the company. Pay commiserate with the knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary to perform the job. As shown in this section, you have many resources to help create a career skills program, working closely with your regional CSP coordinator and following the required criteria that INCOM looks for in these programs, you should have no trouble starting a CSP and incorporating highly skilled talent into your workplace. Welcome to lesson four. The goal of creating a CSP in your business is to find skilled workers for your open positions. As we said before, military hires come with a lot of practical experiences and have great motivation. Here are some guidelines to keep in mind when creating your CSP and examples of the best practices from highly successful CSPs. Make sure the program takes place within a 50 mile radius of the installation. This is considered a standard commute. If the program is greater than 50 miles away, the service member will incur additional transportation and housing costs that will not be reimbursed by the military as these programs are at no additional cost to the Department of Defense. We are still paying their salary after all. Unit commanders can authorize permissive temporary duty, PTDY, which is basically free vacation days for soldiers to participate in a CSP, but additional scrutiny may be placed on the program. The program should not put a financial burden on the service member. They can use benefits from their GI Bill, so there should be no out-of-pocket costs associated with the program. The program should follow basic labor laws and is limited to 40 hours per week. The installation is required to track applicants and the program's outcomes, such as job offers, job placements, graduation rates, and what credentials were obtained. Working with the installation to track this data is extremely helpful and makes the task easier. In order to participate, service members must be 180 days or six months from their expiration term of service, ETS, or retirement date. This is different from the date they start their terminal leave. Based on other career skills programs, here are some of the best practices other companies use to ensure they match their job needs with the right worker. Training should not be too long or too short. 
The optimum timeline falls within 8 to 12 weeks. Less is better if you can meet your training objectives. Keep in mind that the installation still needs the service member because they won't get a replacement for that service member until the service member has actually left the service. A good compromise is to schedule the intern for four days a week. They can return to the unit for admin processing on the fifth day. Be very honest about where the jobs are located and what the starting salary is. Many service members are married and have an obligation to their families. Include the spouse whenever possible. Invite them out to the training and get them excited about the program. Companies that respect the family dynamic can get buy-ins from both the service member and the spouse, making the program that much more successful. The spouse plays an important role in keeping the family together while the service member is on deployment. Understanding their concerns, such as schools in the area, benefits of the job, and relocation assistance can make a huge impact. Don't hesitate to consider the spouse as a potential employee as well. Our military spouses are an untapped resource that can bring many of the same skills the service member can bring to your team. A well-planned career skills program that works hand-in-hand -hand with the local military installation provides many benefits to your company. The quality of the potential new employee to fill jobs is outstanding compared to those hired from the civilian job pool. Matching transitioning service personnel to unpaid internships within the company prepares the potential new hire with almost no cost. By using the training period to accomplish the on-the-job training curve, service members can move easily from their military life into a waiting civilian job where they can be immediately productive. Thank you for taking the time to go through this course. Hopefully we answered your questions about career skills programs and we encourage you to reach out to your regional career skills program coordinator to discuss building one for your business.